Well, Deer and Company manufactures equipment for agriculture, turf, construction, and forestry. This I remember well from my childhood days as John Deere exactly. green tractors. Green tractors. Beautiful yeah. stuff. We've got a client who's a regular hot stocks watcher too, who runs the South African John Deere Appreciation Club because he absolutely adores his John Deere tractors. With the yellow writing, green Nothing tractor, runs yellow like writing. John Deere, it's actually it's the full range. Obviously, it's for forestry, it's for harvesting, it's for all sorts of planting equipment, and it's really a global leader. They basically invented industrial modernized manufacturing. So market cap here of $26.3 billion, a PE of 16.6, .6, and a dividend yield of 2.9%. Now, this mm. is a stalwart brand in the agriculture space. 100%. So whilst you were talking, there's a gentleman who wanted um, or asked me to help him get a planter, and he said, it must be a John Deere. So I'm saying, does it have to be a John Deere? <laughs> so I agree with you. I didn't think that um, in agriculture, people would be so stuck with, um, with brands. So certainly, I think it's a very uh, solid uh, business, uh, long-term long kind of business that has been stuck in there. Uh, the valuations is not very demanding um, uh, as, as we look at it. But if you look in terms of um, uh, the return on equity as well, also quite significant high the PE 16 um, so I think yeah it's a it's a very good company and I think it's solid let's look at the share yeah, chart exactly. you can see it's been a bit wobbly but that's true of a lot of stocks that are exposed to the investment cycles and agriculture remember they also have a construction business because they sell excavators and graders and that kind of thing so that would be impacted by the downturn in the commodity cycle yeah actually. a little bit and that's a global thing although they're a very North American oriented company only one third of their sales are outside of the US and Canada I don't know whether that's a strength or a weakness because the economy is quite strong there but then there's more experience potential to expand globally but it's a bit of a wobbly one I think you know it's not a straightforward plain sailing type situation. Do you agree Joseph that this this is wobbly? I agree with you. Portion? I, I, if you look at the chart it does tell you the story that um, is kind of going 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 nowhere but I think his last point is also quite valid that if you were to look in the long term and say well where are the opportunities they can expand globally, but again, it also depends where the global economy is going. And I think everybody's saying that growth is not going to be coming through. Well, um, they've got to look to, to Africa. I mean, if 60% of the world's uncultivated arable, arable land is True. here in Africa, surely True. that's got to be a huge demand supply equation yeah. for mm. the equipment that they've got in the agriculture space. Plus, according to my notes here, we know we always say these things. 7.2% of the shares are owned by Warren Buffett. That's like, you know, 72. the... 72. <laughs> 7.2. 7 Not 7, okay. yeah. 7 yeah. 7.2. 72, and we'd have to really <laughs> call this one hard. Yeah, you should have brought it <laughs> up. <laughs> 7 but that's always a nice But like the fact that he's there also are in Buffett, you know, you almost want to be pulled. You know, exactly. That does change the investment <laughs> thesis here. So, because Warren Buffett owns 7.2% of Deere and Company, is it hot or not? Inclination. See, I've got a in the works now. I agree with you. You actually picked me up there. Uh, inclination, I think I would buy it. Um, mm. uh, you know. See, that's Captain the Buffett factor coming. coming Let's tip play. it hot. I think the share price yeah. is fairly inexpensive, yeah. and it's a very well-run company. I think the brands. two of you are just too afraid to bet against Warren Buffett.